The set data structure is kind of like an array, except there are no duplicate items, and the values are not in any particular order. The typical use for a set is to simply check for the presence of an item. I'm going to show you how to implement a set function. ES6 actually has a built-in set object. However, the built-in set object does not contain all the methods that are common to sets. So you may still have to implement part of the set yourself, depending on what you're going to use it for. When I show you the implementation for the set, I will tell you which methods are part of the ES6 set and which are not. So we're just going to go through this code. We're going to call it my set. Now we could call it set, but I want to make it different than the, the ES6 set. So this is my set. So here's just the collection. The set is going to be a collection of items and we're going to store them in an array, which an array can have duplicate items, but we're going to implement this in such a way that you cannot add duplicate items to this array. This method, the method has, is going to check for the presence of an element and then return true or false. So you're going to pass in the element and it's going to do collection.index of element is not negative one. So if the element is not in the collection, it's going to return negative one. So if it doesn't return negative one, it's true. So if it's not negative one, it's true. That means the element is in the array, else it's false. Now we have the values. This is going to return all the values of the set. Pretty straightforward, just return the collection. Now we have add, we're going to add an element to this set, but first we have to check if the element is in the set already. So we're going to call the, the method we've already defined, the has method, and see if the collection has the element. If it does not have the element, then we can add it. We're going to push that element to that uh, collection array, and we're going to return true else we're going to return false. So if we don't push an element to the collection, we're returning false. Now we have remove. This is going to remove an element. So first we have to check if the element is in, in the collection. And if it is in the collection, we're going to find out what the index of the element is, and then we're going to remove it. Splice is, means we're going to take out uh, we're going to take out an element in the array starting at the index of the element and going for one element we're going to take out one element and then we're going to return true or we're going to return false if that element is not in the collection. Then we're just going to return the size of the collection. Um, we're just going to return collection.length. Every method we've gone through so far is in the ES6 implementation of the set. So the ES6 set has values, add, uh, remove, and size, except remove is delete. In the ex6 set, instead of calling remove, you're going to call delete. But all the other things are included. Oh, another thing is size is not a method in the ES6 set. Size is a property. Uh, that just means that when you're calling it, you're not going to put parentheses at, after the, the method because it's just a property. So you can do set.size instead of set.size with parentheses after it. Okay, now we're going to get into the methods that are not in the ES6 implementation of the set, but are often included in sets. The next few methods actually just help you work with sets and when you're working with two different sets. So we have union. This method is going to return the union of two sets. So it's going to combine the sets, but leave out any duplicates in the combination of the sets. So we're, we're going to call the union method on the original set and we're going to pass in the other set that we want to combine. We're going to create a, a new set which this should be my set. Same with down here because we want to make it distinct from the ES6 set. So we have the, the union set which is just a new set. That's what we're going to combine the sets into. We have the first set which is this dot values and the values we're just calling the the values method up here to return the collection. And the second set is going to be the other set.values. We're going to do first set for each, and for each value in that set, we're going to do union set.add to add the value. Then we'll do the same thing, second set dot for each, and for each value in the second set, we're going to add the value. Remember the add method 
already does not add the value if it's a duplicate. So the union set now will not contain any duplicates. And since for the set data structure the order doesn't matter, we don't have to have the values in any particular order. And then we're going to return the union set. Now we have intersection, which is going to return the intersection of the two sets as a new set. So we're going to make a new set here, intersection set equals new my set. The first set, again, we're going to call the this.values to get all the values in the first set. Now, for each value in the first set, we are going to check if the other set has the value. We are going to add it, and then we're going to return the intersection set. So the intersection is just all the items that are in both sets and that's we're going to return that as a new set and this next function we're also going to have to add the my there so this is the difference so the difference between the sets so all the items that are in one set but not the other set so we're going to create a new set again the different set and again we're going to get the values of the first set now this is very similar to the intersection we're going to go through each value in the first set and if the other set does not have the value. Remember, up here we were seeing if the other set had the value. Now we're going to use the not operator, the exclamation point, to see if the, it, the value is not in the set, and we're going to add that to the diff different set. Then we'll return the different set. And the last method we're going to talk about is the subset. And this is going to test if the set is a subset of a different set. So it's going to test if the first set is completely contained within the second set. So it's just going to return true or false. So we're going to pass in the other set. We're going to, again, get all the values of the first set. And we're going to call this function first set dot every. And what the every method is going to do is going to test whether all the elements in the array pass the test implemented by the provided function. So we're going to test if all the elements in the first set will pass this function, which is other set dot has value. Are all the elements in the first set, um, are they in the second set? So we're going to see if, it, if the first set is a subset of the second set. So that's the set data structure. And let's quickly just show you some some uses of the set so we have set a is my new my set set b is new my set we're going to add to set a a we're going to add to set b b we're going to add to set b c we're going to add to set b a and we're going to add to set b d and now we're going to see if set a is a subset of set b so is set a is every item in set a which is actually just the letter a in set B, which it is because it's right here. Let's run that and it should say true. Let's do some other things. Okay, and this is the set A dot intersection set B is going to return a new set, which we are then going to call the values function so we can see all the values in that set. And it's just A because the only value that's in both set A and set B is a that we can do a lot of the same things with the built-in set I'm gonna copy all this instead of calling this my set we're just gonna have set we're gonna do set C and set D okay so here's one difference with the ES6 set is that when you call the values method instead of returning an array it's going to return an iterator so you can see object set iterator here and then you can still iterate through all the items in the array besides that all the other methods that a set has are very similar to the the set that we implemented so we can do set d dot delete now this is instead of remove so we're gonna delete the a and then we're going to console.log and check if set D has A. And we can see it's false because it's been deleted. And we can also try to add D, which is already in the set. 
Oh, and there is one final thing that's different with the ES6 implementation. The add method is not going to return true or false um, whether it, the, the item has been added or not. Besides adding the item, what it's going to return, so what, what it's going to console.log is, is the set itself. It's not an array of the set, it's going to return the full set. So if we run that, you can see here, it's going to return the set, which is an object. And since it's an object, it's not going to show all the different items in the set. Okay, that's the set data structure. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and remember, use your code for good.